everybody. It's Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Evaluation. And that's very important in the context of today's video because when you look at the overall market today, I believe it's very, very highly valued as we enter 2022. In other words, the market is trading at a really a, an extreme valuation today. And, you know, I've often said, as any of those of you who have watched my work, that it's a market of stocks and not a stock market. And in that vein, there are about 19 to 20,000 companies that we cover in the FastGraph database, at U.S. and Canadian companies, for example. And there are 11 major sectors in that universe. And I got a request from a, a subscriber, and I'm going to give a shout out to him, called Golden Turd Zenaru. <laughs> Love your name, by the way. And he says, Dear Chuck, can you make a video on three stocks in every sector for a rising rate environment? Thanks if you think it's worth it. Well, you know, to me, stocks for a rising rate environment would be true to my name or my monocle, if you will. I'm looking for very, you know, attractively valued stocks because I believe the overvalued stocks are going to be the ones that are most vulnerable. Although all stocks may fall if we have a major bear market, the undervalued stocks will surely recover much quicker than the overvalued stocks. And that's basically my premise as I do this. So I took this suggestion and I kind of modified it a little bit. What I thought was, let's look at the overall market, go through every sector, all 11 of them, and try to see and decide whether or not, you know, how many stocks there were in each sector that were reasonably valued. Okay, and so, you know, let me move to the fast graphs now and look at it from the, from the perspective I want to look at. If you look at the overall market, as I suggested, then you'll notice that the S&P 500 is very, very high. The orange line on this graph, on a fast graph, indicates what would theoretically be the intrinsic value. So sort of, you know, you could kind of look at it like what the price ought to be, what the market ought to trade at. The blue line is the normal P.E. ratio line, we call it. It actually reflects how the market has valued itself, in this case, the S&P 500 over time. And so if you look at this graph closely, you'll see that most of the time, the stock price, which is the black line here, the weekly closing prices, have traded within these two lines, or certainly close to it. And, you know, it was separated coming into the 2001 recession, and now we're separated again. And these very high valuations are very, very vulnerable. And I, as I mentioned, you know, in a previous video, rising interest rates are, you know, something that could really stimulate the market to revert to the mean and get back to a normal valuation. And again, although all stocks, you know, may fall in that environment, the ones that are undervalued should be the ones to recover the most because what you do notice when you look at these graphs, and you'll see that over and over again throughout this video and the future ones I'm going to do, that the price always comes back you know, into alignment with these lines. It gets disconnected at times, but it always comes back. It, when it gets undervalued, it kind of comes back. When it gets overvalued, it tends to come back. So the key is, I always say, trust the orange line and or the blue line a lot more than you do the price line because stock prices tend to be pathological liars. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to do a series of videos, 11 of them all told. This will be the first one. And what I'm going to do is look at and screen for value in the overall market, i.e. it's a market of stocks, not a stock market, and see how many stocks in each sector are reasonably valued. So if I go to my screening tool here, I've pre-screened these 11 sectors, as you can see, and I've got names. I'm going, to, I'm going to cover the communication services one first in today's video. Okay, but if I go into screening and go into communication services, I go ahead and go into the screening tool, and I go to the GIX industry group, all right, the GIX sector group, because there's 11 of them. I'm going to look at the communication services group would be the one that I'm, I'm doing today for you, okay, down here. And I'm going to just go ahead and check it, okay, and then I'm just going to run the query just to see what kind of re results I get. And what you'll note here, there are 500 names that are in the communication services sector, all right? If I go then to my screen, I've only got 11 names in the communication services sector that actually meet my screening criteria. And let, let me talk about what I screened for here a little bit. I screened for investment grade only, triple B minus or better. I screened for estimated 
trend line growth or the 10 year historical growth of at least 5%. I also screened for future growth, trend line future analyzed rate of return expectations of 5% or better. I screened for an earnings yield of 6% or higher. And again, you know, I screened for the individual sector that I'm talking about. Now, I can modify these screens really almost unlimited. I could drop off the credit rating screen and say, you know, just let me look for all companies that are fairly valued in this sector. But what I'm doing first, this first cut at least, I'm looking for investment grade companies that meet the screen. And so these are the names that I came up with, 11 names in this sector that are attractively valued. And again, the key is I'm looking for good valuation, but I'm also looking for that relationship between earnings and price. So let's go ahead and go through these. Let's start by looking at Comcast here, the first one that came up. And again, you learn so much from these fast graphs when you look at a company. Number one is you see that the company was actually losing money back in 01, 02, and 03, but yet the market had it very, very highly valued. And, you know, there was really no way to calculate a P.E. ratio, although as we got into the points where the company did start to make money, we started to see P.E. ratios that were just, you know, astronomical, 100 times earnings, etc. But what you note is, so the point I'm making is Comcast was extremely overvalued here. And you went eight, nine, ten years of you know dead money, if you will. The stock literally went nowhere. You know, if you look at the highs and lows up here, you can see it was fifteen for a high in oh one, and it was still you know trading at eleven and nine and eleven, and even up through two thousand eleven, where it never really got above that high. So we had dead money for this whole period of time, and again, I think it's a primarily a function of overvaluation. Now, when I shorten the time frame, you also get the perspective that I harp on constantly that where the earnings of the business go, the stock price follows. And when it gets disconnected, it kind of reverts to the mean and comes back. If it gets undervalued, it comes back. If it gets overvalued, it comes back. And you can see now that Comcast today is very reasonably priced relative to the overall market that I showed you in the beginning. And, you know, it would be then one that you might want to research and look at or even, you know, consider investing in. It offers a, just under a 2% yield. Blended PE is 15.69. Earnings yield is 637 I'd like to see it a little bit higher than that, but you know, it's really pretty good. The company has an A minus credit rating and it has reasonable debt at about 51% debt to capital. So, you know, it looks really, really good here from a standpoint. Now, let's go through the rest of the companies that I screened for in this sector and see what we see. Discover doesn't pay a dividend. Okay, so it's no yield. This is strictly based on capital appreciation or depreciation. But once again, you see how important earnings are to stock price. You see, when the stock price got above earnings, you see the fact that it eventually moves back into alignment. When it got overvalued, that led to a long period of time of very poor performance. Then it was undervalued for a long period of time here, and then it kind of rallied strongly and then fell again, and now it would look like it would be undervalued today, you know, looking to the future. And again, I'm just going to cover these in with one metric, and I'm just going to look at them briefly. I'm not going to get into a long dissertation on each company, but this stock would look attractive today in this highly inflated market if you were interested in a company like this that you could buy at such a low valuation. So discovery. Now, there are different classes of discovery that came up in this screen, if you will. So I'm going to skip the other three because they all look pretty much the same. Next, I'm going to go here to Hellenic Telecommunications okay, organization. This is a company whose country of origin I'm actually not sure of. I don't really know this company, but it's a very interesting chart because First of all, instantly looking at a fast graph, you see what the business looks like. You see that the company's earnings were kind of sporadic. And then you start seeing a period where the company's earnings and dividend really started to perform pretty well. So by shortening the time frame into this time frame, you see that it's been a pretty good stock over the last four, five, six years or so where, you know, the company's earnings have grown and the company's stock price has tracked those. Earnings have grown at over 13% a year, offers a 3.6% dividend yield, decent earnings yield, P.E. about 16 it's within the range of fair value now, and if it, you know, the market dropped a little bit, it would certainly become viable. So that's a, you know, another example of a stock in this sector, only 11, that you know, look pretty attractive out of 500 that are in the overall sector, that are investment grade. IPG, advertising company, you can see how important earnings were by looking back here and seeing how the stock performed horribly during the time when the business performed horribly. And then as the business began to get traction here, you can start seeing that the stock price followed the earnings beautifully. And right now it's fairly valued with almost a 3% dividend yield, earnings yield of about 6.9% and a PE of around 14 
So, you know, this one looks like it's obviously a reasonably attractive company in this sector currently. Moving on here, going into the next one, this would be Nippon, I guess it's pronounced, Telephone and Telegraph. Again, you can see the relationship between price and earnings. The market likes to value this at around 10 or 11 times earnings, you will note. Um, but the stock does look attractive even on that basis, 2.78% dividend yield. But you can see, again, how important a company's operating results are to its performance. During this period here where earnings were relatively flat, you know, they went from 94 cents to 99 cents over this, you know, eight or 10 year period here. You can see the stock price did nothing. It wasn't until the company started growing that we started to see some pretty decent performance in the stock. You know, the performance here was you know, 12% over that time frame. Um, underperformed the market, but it did perform in line with its earnings growth of 10.4% plus dividend income. The next stock in this category would be OMC Corporation. Very interesting. You can see again how the stock price was overvalued and it performed poorly, how the price followed earnings, but it gets up and down quite a bit. It gets disconnected quite a bit. Right now, it looks like it's undervalued, offers a 3.7% dividend yield, 12 PE with an 8% earnings yield. This one looks like real attractive stock in this particular sector right now. Next one would be Viacom, and I've got a couple of Viacoms here, different classes. Another interesting one, look at how the stock price and the operating results really correlate here. How, you know, the stock grew strongly here. Excuse me, I'm a little hoarse today. The stock grew strongly here, and you can see the price followed it. And then we start running into some operating difficulties and uncertainties. The markets don't like uncertainty. The stock price collapsed. Of course, COVID came along and, it, you know, that was the flash crash that added more. The stock rallied very strongly and now it's fallen again. This is the one you might want to take a closer look at, especially if you're more of a speculator or a trader. Anyway, that's Viacom. And then finally, last but not least, would be Verizon. In this sector, Verizon has been undervalued now for a couple of years it offers a 4.74% dividend yield, almost a 10% earnings yield. You can buy it at a 10 PE. I think Verizon looks very attractive because of the valuation. That's the key. But also note that the stock's performance relates very closely to the business's performance. And that's something that is why valuation is so important. Because if you're going to invest in a company, you want to get everything that the company is capable of generating for you on your behalf. And you do that by buying a stock at fair value. And then if you buy a stock at undervalue, you can actually do better than the business itself. Anyway, this is one of my next 11 videos here. This is on the communication services sector. You know, the screen that I did for you here on 11 companies out of 500 that, you know, reasonably valued, if you will. I've got 11 more to do. Consumer discretionary will be next and consumer staples and so on. And I think you'll be surprised to see how few stocks are reasonably valued that are investment grade, at least, in this market. Anyway, it's been Chuck Harville saying thanks for watching. I want to thank Golden Turd again, <laughs> Zenaru, for uh, giving me the inspiration to do this series of articles. I think it's going to be a kind of a fun exercise. So I hope you join me in the following videos. If you like this video, give me a like. Uh, ring the bell if you want to be you know, notified of future videos coming out. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you might also want to take a closer look at FastGraph. You can see what a valuable tool it is, helping you identify the quality of the company you're investing in, how the company's business has performed, and how the market has treated that performance. Anyway, this is Chuck Harnwell saying thanks for watching.